Recently, Jonathan Adler of Ariel University and Omri Lernau of Haifa University published a paper as part of Adler's ongoing project to date the beginnings of Jewish observance. In this paper, they show that non-kosher fish bones had been found at what are considered Judite and Israelite settlements. They make the claim that although the text of the Torah dealing with the dietary laws could have been written from possibly before the 7th century BCE until 331 BCE, the practice of abstaining from aquatic animals that lacked fins and scales was not known or kept by the common Judite until the mid 2nd century BCE. They further make the case that finding of non-kosher fish bones during the Persian period points to the fact that the Torah laws, at least those regarding abstaining from non-kosher fish, had not yet been accepted by the masses. This video will show that this is a bombastic claim and that the evidence here when coupled with scriptural data actually fits well within the stories of the Bible. This story begins with the portions of Torah which deal with the laws of Kashrut namely Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14. Within the Israeli academic world, there has been much discussion as to whether the abstention of pork was due to taboo or more practical, ecological, and social economic factors. It has been observed that from the late Bronze Age 2B until the end of the Iron Age, from about 1300 BCE until 586 BCE, less than 2% of animal remains found in archaeological context in the land of Israel come from pigs. Those 2% were found primarily in sites attributed to the Philistines, Egyptians, and Israelites. The Judites as well as the Canaanites, Arameans, and Phoenicians seem to have not consumed pork. Lack of pig bones was once thought to distinguish if a site was Israelite or Judite. However, now that it has been established that others also abstain from pork, this is no longer the case. Adler and Lernau seek to break the connection between the kosher status of a pig and fish that lack fins and scales found in the Torah's dietary laws. They argue that the abstention from pork was within the realm of long-observed local custom, whereas non-kosher fish were consumed in Judite settlements. This is a problematic statement. The authors readily admit that they have no way of being able to accurately assess the actual amount of fish consumed within any archaeological level, or over how long of a period of time these fish were eaten. Their own example of 50 bones representing five fish over the course of 400 years doesn't exactly bode well for the theory of masses of Judites consuming non-kosher fish. Further, there is no way of definitively discerning the ethnicity of the alleged catfish munchers. Yes, the bones were found in a predominantly Judite area. However, Archaeology has moved away from such assumptions that population centers from this era were homogeneous. The researchers mention this and assume the general identities of sites as per archaeological understandings. In terms of real numbers, it can actually be argued that the vast majority of fish bones were kosher species. If all the sites throughout Iron II Jerusalem are added together, we arrive at a total of 617 scaleless fish bones out of a grand total of 7,132 fish bones. This would mean a total of 8.7% of the fish bones found were not kosher. These bones date over a period of 314 years. Considering that the Bible speaks of many Judites engaged in idolatry, and therefore it would seem logical to conclude that the Judites would not be punctilious in keeping the rest of the commandments, the numbers indicate the exact opposite. The vast majority of Iron II Jerusalem fish consumption, or 91.3%, was actually kosher. Besides possible apostate Judites and Israelites, the consumption of non-kosher fish could also be attributed to Gentile consumption, animal feed, or a combination of any of the three. The high percentage of non-kosher fish consumption in Ramat Rachel, located just outside Jerusalem, could also be attributed 
to the non-Judite population as this place served as an administrative center for foreign regimes to gather taxes from the Judites from the time of the Assyrians and onwards. The breakdown of non-kosher fish consumption from the Persian period in Jerusalem is worse than that of iron too. With 181 non-kosher fish bones out of a total of 795 fish bones, or 22.8% of the total fish consumption. Again, this fits well within the biblical evidence found in the book of Nehemiah, where it actually claims that Tyrians brought fish to Jerusalem to market them on Shabbat, or the Sabbath day. Both the books of Ezra and Nehemiah make reference to there being a low level of Torah observance in Jerusalem at this time, as well as the presence of non-Jewish women married to the local men. According to historians, Nehemiah came to Jerusalem in 444 BCE in the 20th year of Artaxerxes I. The authors reject the evidence from the biblical narrative in favor of their theory based on the analysis of Wright, who makes the claim that these references are later additions. Even if one goes with Wright's theory, I personally don't, there is nothing to exclude the possibility that this section was still written within the Persian period. With all of the assimilation that we spoke about in the Bible, 72.2% of the fish consumed in the Persian period was actually kosher. It really boils down to how one views the numbers. The claim that the common Judites did not know the commandment to abstain from non-kosher fish and therefore prove later authorship of the Torah seems highly speculative, unsubstantiated, and well beyond the evidence of a few fish bones. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to smash that like button. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.